So one of my favorite things about video games is the Easter eggs. If you don't know what an Easter egg is, it's a hidden reference or message in, in a movie, TV show, or in this case, game. I know a little bit about coding and what goes into making a game, so it really speaks to me that the developers would take the time to put these things into the game. With that said, my name is Matt, aka Chunky Monkey Games, and this is my top 10 favorite Easter eggs in gaming. The only rules are one game per franchise and it must be a secret. If it's in plain sight, then that's no fun. With that said, let's get started. Alright, so boom, you're playing Portal 2. You're sciencing your way through these test chambers. Then you get to Chapter 2, Test Chamber 6, and it... I... I don't... I don't know where to go from here. Uh... Aerial Faith Plates, Wee! As mentioned five seconds ago, in Chapter 2, Test Chamber 6, there is an Easter egg. I mean, it's not like it's in the title of the video or anything. If you science your way all the way to the area where are supposed to push the button, all the garbage should come out of where the cube should come out. Among this garbage, you'll find one of the radios that are always scattered around the game. If you take the radio back to the start of the chamber, place the portals where I placed them, and jump on the faith plate, you should make it to the ever so elusive Ratman's Den. You just, you just want some hugs, right? Right? If you take the radio further into the chamber, some strange static sounds can be heard. If you put this sound through a special audio software, you can decipher a secret message. It shows what seems to be our good friend the companion cube on the moon. Spoiler alert! It's a picture foreshadowing the end of the game. I think it's pretty neat how they decided to do this. Now if only they had a Portal 3 easter egg. Do it, Gabe. Do it. Now, I'm not much of a Saints Row fan, as I've always been more of a GTA kind of guy, but Saints Row 2 in particular has one of the funniest easter eggs I have ever seen. So if you sail out eastward, you'll eventually come across an island with a sign that looks like an arrow. That's, that's probably because it is. Anyways, sail to where the arrow is pointing out and come across another island with the same arrow. Follow it again you'll come across a third island. After walking off of the third island, it should disappear. What you will see next cannot be described with words. Just watch. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take this seriously. It's a giant body! What do you think this is? Like seriously, imagine you're watching Godzilla and this thing comes out of the water. The only thing I don't like about this easter egg is how you just can't really do anything with it. It's just kind of there. The most you can do is drive into it and it'll simply fade away. Two thousand thirteen, and I guess extended into two thousand fourteen, was Nintendo's year of Luigi. It was also the release of Super Mario 3D World, one of my favorite Mario games of all time. Since it was the year of Luigi, Nintendo decided to put some little Luigi references in the game. And by little, I mean millions. But seriously, these things are everywhere. Trust me, if you look hard enough in any level, you will find a Luigi. No joke. However, my personal favorite is in World 1's castle. At the very beginning of the level, use your cat suit to climb up to this area right here and wait a few seconds. After that few seconds, you should be able to see a giant 8-bit Luigi casually walking through the ocean. I find it super cool how Nintendo put all these Luigis everywhere in what seems like completely random places. It really goes to show how far people will go to find these little tidbits in games. Gears of War isn't really my kind of game. A lot like Saints Row, that doesn't stop me from enjoying the easter eggs in this game. Gears of War 3 in particular seems to have a lot of, how should I say, chicken themed easter eggs. Trust me, this is, this is too crazy to make up. In Act 1 Chapter 1, you'll come across this area here. Go up to all these pipes and wait until your character yells hello. On the last pipe, a chicken should pop out. If the Legend of Zelda series has taught me anything, it's that you should always attack chickens. Always. No exceptions. If you shoot this chicken enough, it will transform into this golden mutant death chicken. Of death. Did I mention that it's deadly? I don't think that's been stressed enough. Oh yeah, and this thing breathes fire. Doesn't get much cooler than this, ladies and gentlemen. There's also other chicken themed easter eggs in this game, but I urge you to look you those up on your own. This was the one that I found most interesting. Plus it's my list, so next! Oh yeah, stick! 
Fairfax! In the original Star Fox for the Super Nintendo, there's a secret level you can access. To access this secret level, first you need to play through Corneria normally and take the bottom path to the Asteroid Belt. About 40 seconds into the Asteroid Belt, you'll see a giant grey asteroid on the left and then later another one on the right. Shoot the one on the right till it explodes and it'll launch an egg-shaped projectile into the distance. The egg then hatches, or something, and a giant bird comes out. So what you're going to have to do now is go against everything this game has ever told you ever, and fly into the bird, and you'll be transported to a place that isn't on the map. It is literally called Out of This Dimension, and I'm assuming that's where they were when they put this in the game. It looks like an interstellar acid trip. Once you're in, random enemies will appear, and by random enemies, I mean paper airplanes, because that's definitely a practical way to travel the Lilat system. Then you kill them, and then a giant slot machine appears. Seems like seems like just a day in the life, you know what I'm saying? Protecting protecting the Lilat system, and then shooting giant slot machines. It's completely normal. You've seen the news. Shoot the lever to pull it down, and then basically play to you win. If you manage to get three sevens, you hit the jackpot! You are then rewarded? I don't think that's the word you should really use there, maybe? I don't know. But you are then rewarded with some scrambling text that reads, the end. Then you do nothing. Literally nothing. The game doesn't restart or anything, and I guess you just sit in purgatory forever. It's really ominous, and that's why I like it so much. That That's it. Let's, let's go to the next one. Okay? Oh, Call of Duty. I used to like you, but then you demonstrated that you don't know how to make a game without copy and paste. In the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 map, Nuketown 2025, there's an easter egg that you can access on the random TV in the middle of the map. To access it, all you have to do is shoot the heads off of all the mannequins in less than 90 seconds, and then the TV will change, allowing you to play games with actual gameplay elements. I was honestly amazed when I first heard about it. My friends, despite being Call of Duty fanatics, hadn't heard of it, so I showed them. I... I had... I had no clue how I was going with that story. But yeah, Black Ops 2. Atari 2600 games. Explosions. Number 4. Go! Back in 1990, there was a contest held by Nintendo Power where the winner would get a cameo in the upcoming game The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. The winner was a guy by the name of Chris Houlihan, who got his own secret room in the game. There are many ways to access this room, but the easiest way in my opinion is by successfully completing a series of well-timed and positioned runs with the Pegasus Boots, starting from Sanctuary and ending at Hyrule Castle's secret entrance. The room actually acts as a failsafe for when the game doesn't know which room to send Link to, so really the only way to get to it is by glitching or hacking the game. Once inside, you'll find a bunch of blue rupees with a sign that reads, My name is Chris Houlihan, and this is my top secret room. Keep it between us, okay? This easter egg actually wasn't discovered until 2002, and is actually pretty hard to pull off, which is why it's at number 4. Also, I like Zelda games, so bias is for the win. Yeah, boy, Assassin's Creed 3! You dudes wanna fight me? You wanna, f you wanna fight? Boom! I died. I was never that into Assassin's Creed, and the only one that I ever played was Assassin's Creed 3. I'm a scrub, but I don't really care. Scrubbing bubbles. While not necessarily one of the better ones, Assassin's Creed 3 still has something enjoyable about it. In Assassin's Creed 3, if you go to your house and feed this turkey here some food, then input the Konami code, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, I start- YES, I STILL GOT IT! The turkey will then get its own hood, and then you can be ASSASSIN BUNNIES! I really like this easter egg because of how random it is. There's really no point in it existing, and that's why I like it. And you know what they say about pointless things? That they're- they're pointless. That's- that's why they call them pointless. In case you haven't noticed this pattern yet, I haven't played a lot of the games on this list. One of those includes Red Faction Armageddon, but that doesn't stop me from liking the easter egg. Plus it's my list, so shut up, you dumb. Just kidding, I love you. To access this easter egg, you have to be in the first mission of the game. When you see hold blank to speak with Kara, whoever that is, don't do that, and instead break the door behind you, in the back corner of the room. Once you break it, walk to the end of the corridor, then break the floor. Walk through the hallway, and then break every door on the way. Then just break the final door, and then you'll find... Mr. Toots. Th this thing, this thing right here, best weapon ever. Boom. Best weapon. Mr. Toots is a unicorn that shoots rainbow lasers through his butthole. <laughs> There's, there's no way anyone can say that with a straight face. I love this thing because of how unfitting it is to be in a game like Red Faction. 
a fun thing that you can do with Mr. Toots is that if you get infinite ammo for the plasma beam, you also get infinite ammo for Mr. Toots. Also, explosive rainbow farts. That is all. It's now time for some honorable mentions. <sighs> you probably all saw this coming, didn't you? Major cop out in three, two, one. Hey look, heists are out! The number one spot goes not only to GTA 5, but the whole GTA franchise as a whole. Each installment in the series has some great easter eggs, some more than others. San Andreas had the jetpack and the message on the bridge that reads, There are no easter eggs here, go away. Heh, <laughs> Rockstar, you and your witty humor. <coughs> I'm good. Grand Theft Auto 4 also had its fair share of easter eggs, my personal favorite being the famed Heart of Liberty City. If you go to the top of the Statue of Liberty, it's actually the Statue of Happiness, but you get the point, just roll with it, you will find a sign that says, no hidden content here. Walk into the door and you should face through it, then climb up the ladder, which should lead you to the literal heart of Liberty City. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for! GTA 5 easter eggs. GTA 5 has so many easter eggs, I can't even stress it. There's the aliens, the No Country for Old Men easter egg, Master Chief, and even a reference to Zombrex from the Dead Rising series. There's so many, I mentally can't take this! The whole Grand Theft Auto franchise goes at number one purely because of just how many easter eggs there are, and Rockstar has even said that there are ones that will never be found. Ever. I think that in the far future, when Grand Theft Auto 7 is out, people will still be finding easter eggs in the previous installments. <laughs> Oh hey, how you doing there? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then hit that like button, hit that thumbs up, whatever you like to do, punch that like button in the face, or the thumb, or the whatever, I'm not using this take, what am I even saying? If you want to see more videos like this, and hear more of my majestic voice, then please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out, really makes my day, to see my count go up, to see more people supporting my channel. Also, you can hit me up on twitch.tv, where I do live streams, obviously. And you can also hit me up on Twitter, where I do, um, you know, Twitter-related things. That's, that's gonna be all for this video, but, uh, stay tuned for, for the next one. My name is Matt, aka Chunky Monkey Games, and I'll see you guys next time.